PDP, please don't punch, at least not with the power of kicks. Good afternoon and welcome to Turbo Tortoise Tech. PDP today is going to be kick punching. That's punching with the power of kicks. As they've done a very cool licensed, it's basically an Xbox controller, but with a couple of like, they've thefted some function key sets and stuff from the laptop environment. So you could do a couple of cool things right on the controller. So let's start off with where it's basically just an Xbox controller. Dual analog. Nicely set up, decent dead zones, 5% on the base. So you shouldn't really need to adjust it out of box. I found it actually quite comfortable like that. And they are very sensitive. So that 5% dead zone is very good unless you have like one millimeter reactions as it were, because it will start moving on one millimeter. The D-pad as well is fantastic. It's like one of the best D-pads I've ever used on a controller, maybe ever. I'm a big D-pad fan for certain areas in gaming and stuff and for moving around menus and stuff and well also for doing sweeps and stuff like in street fighter for instance you can just you know run your hand in the half moon across the bottom of the d-pad and it does the half moon movement for you so that you can then do the it's also quite good for uh, certain areas in like Tekken and stuff I'll actually rather play off the d-pad with characters that have a lot of like forward back movement because it takes a lot longer to do that than it does to do that so having a nice d-pad is quite essential one thing that I was concerned about was as you can see it's molded I'll show you a close-up of that and I thought that it wouldn't do the angular sides because of that but they've set up the rocker and stuff in here in such a way that it it's really not an issue you can do the diagonals really nicely there's no catch no weird feelings on it nicely done x y a b normal positioning everything felt comfortable it is a licensed product so the shape and everything is pretty much exactly what comes from xbox they have however changed a little bit on the stalks at the bottom over here it is a little bit flatter which i have to say actually is a little bit more comfortable especially for these two fingers over here like to push in and hold over there because it's a slightly flattened surface feels really nice and natural and so i can hold the controller just with that and it frees up the rest of my fingers to do what they need to do best right which is the kick punching comes with a 2.4 meter cable as well detachable i thought maybe it wasn't going to be detachable after i put it in because it literally won't go anywhere you have to like yank the thing to get it out of there it is a micro usb as well so it should be pretty easy to replace these are still quite dime a dozen and have been around for quite some time thanks to mobile phones so yeah the the to replace the usb cable should be pretty easy triggers and lb rb are nicely done they find i mean the audio from the lb rb is about the loudest for this controller the buttons and stuff on the stalks are also pretty loud but the rest are very as per normal. Now, where this critically differs, though, to an Xbox controller, and just remove that and put that over to the side, is it's got software that backs it up. Quite nice software. You can do a couple of things in there. It does automatic firmware updates, which is always nice. So you're always on the latest revision for your controller. And you can remap keys, which is one of the nice things, like I said, with the crossover from the PC laptop environment. But critically, this has a couple of function key sets on it and they're nicely hidden. So on the bottom right, you may have noticed an extra little button next to the bottom right analog. And that is so you can do well the function key sets that are on here, which are primarily for your chat and your gaming audio mix and that volume and then your main volume. It can also mute your mic as well, but let's, let me show you the first, those ones first. So if you hold in and then you hit up or down on the D-pad, it's gonna adjust your volume. And then if you hit left or right, it's gonna adjust that chat gaming balance mix. Now you won't have to alt tab in order to get any of that. In, or in Xbox, for instance, you'd have to hit the Xbox button, go into the control panel, adjust your audio volume, and then go back to your game. Now you can do it seamlessly on the fly. And if your mom is calling you for dinner, or your wife probably, for a lot of us um then, then you just double tap 
that guy over there and then the LED will come on and then you'll know that it's then muted the microphone. The LED indicator at the top as well doesn't actually extend into the Xbox button, which I'm kind of a little bit sad. I think they should have maybe just made it a part of that. The Xbox button does look really cool. It's got like a glint to it. It's not actually a, a lit, backlit at all. It's just like the surface and stuff that they put on it comes off like that. About the only criticism I have for the physical product is the mirror finishes. I don't really like that there is a mirror finish on top. It is a little bit prone to scratching and it will like decay over time. It's not the biggest surface on this controller, so pinch of salt. One thing I have also forgotten to mention is your audio can be relayed through the controller and that's where then you can then manage those balances automatically. You'll have to use them through the controller in order to do that. But just connecting your headset into the bottom of the controller in your hands over there isn't going to be a deal breaker for a lot of people, I think. Now, usage and performance is where this thing was just blowing me away constantly. I hadn't played Tekken 7 in a little bit of time, not really on my PC either. We had it in circulation like three years ago when I was at Aces quite a lot for events and obviously I played quite a lot back then. And getting back into it now and sitting down with this controller, it it hooked me right back in because well things were going pretty well i'll put some more of the gameplay towards the end of the video i'll slap in a couple of the more decent rounds and stuff that i had and some of the better timings and stuff but after a short time i was um, doing a lot of kick punching and uh, people were picking up you know teeth and their valuables off of the ground next to me because low power that's how we get down. Then I was like, hey, let's play a couple of racing games as well, because that's one of the other chief areas I really do like to have a controller. I literally bought a Logitech F310 just for playing Need for Speed Heat and Forza 5. And playing Forza 5 on this compared to that was significantly better, to the point that I started thumping the AR so hard that the game was like, hey, I think you should uh, up, your, up your difficulty now and up the difficulty to the maximum and then still thump them. So yeah it works it works really well it's a really really a lot of fun especially for the for Tekken and the fighting game I love having joypad most of the characters and stuff I play benefit from joypad guys like law and stuff where you just are holding forward or you're doing a sweep or just a down and then a double double kick for instance for dragon whip tail and that sort of stuff a lot of your movements are just down and angular forward or um, back forward like not a lot of back forward that's more like I played some Kazuya who's a little bit more like back forward like different sort of flow states for for his moveset um, and it was still really really good I'm not a big street fighter guy so yeah you're not gonna really see me play that but I can tell you the performance of the controller did not also hit me at all in fact it was so much fun and it was going so well I just kind of carried on playing um, endlessly and I think I got a 20 win streak on law or something stupid like that or because I don't even know um, I was just going and going and going and going and going in the story mode or the um, what's it what's it treasure mode treasure box mode and it was absolutely fantastic for 800 oh before I forget okay something that was really nice with how the rumble sensitivity works in this is it's actually like I would say about five or six different scalable levels if you check in the software it's actually by percent you can actually change it like quite uh, quite linear linear but the actual hand feeling was about five or six different levels and what they created especially in the racing games was like a really good sort of insight into how the wheels and stuff on the car were actually behaving and what forces and g-forces and lateral g etc that i was putting them under because force is a bit more like a gran turismo and as i was going around corners i found that when the tires were slipping up more when the torque was starting to actually outdo it and i was entering a drift it became really easy to understand okay cool i've got too much angle now or it's going to proceed if too much angle if i put accelerator if i don't counter steer enough etc like it was really easy to get cars in and out of drifts and stuff and forza is like a little bit more difficult than interface with the car control and stuff so it it became like really handy to have that even in need for speed i could feel it especially with like my track car which is a ridiculously souped up f uh, ferrari f40 that thing's very good through the corners i often don't have to use that like drift system that they want you to use and i get exit speeds of like 30 40 kilometers an hour faster as a result so having that on the controller was like such a welcome change from the little like entry-level logitech f310 this is me right here 
this is this is me right here this is like i, I don't even mind that it's wide i honestly could care less it's a 2.4 meter cable you don't really feel it the build quality of this thing is super solid if i just shake it around you'll see the only thing making a bit of noise are the actual sticks everything else in this is like rock rock solid like i say that that's about the only criticism i have for this controller is this one is a little bit squeaky um you'd probably avoid the warranty but if you could open it up and just put in a little bit of uh, keyboard lubrication or switch lube in there it would make that just a little bit more pleasant all in all at its price point of 800 rand you've got a xbox controller plus with a lot of customization usually you only get that stuff on like higher end wheels and stuff i'm used to those kind of dead zone tampering and and feature sets and software on like a tmx force which is like a four and a half grand steering wheel and to have the really nice rumble with like super super powerful rumble in this i was gonna say dual shock i can't well i can't i can i can call it with the dual shock because um yeah i'm a reviewer i'm not a, in advertising so which is great, so I can actually say that. <laughs> With the rumble, everything inside of this was was super, super sick. I really have fallen in love with this controller, which makes it even harder now that I have to do a giveaway on it. So that's, that's gonna be coming up on our channel. I've got the uh, new Turtle Beach, which also has similar function sets like this with some equalizers and other kind of nice stuff for the Xbox, which I'm actually gonna go and try and test on the Xbox this time, because those are specific and only work on that platform, which it is a little bit sucky but i'm going to try it out it is pc compatible as well and we'll be doing a giveaway on that as well so until next time stay safe keep well and i will see you on the flip side one fight <laughs> Oh, come on. But no. Yeah! <laughs> 
Sorry, Paul. <laughs> <laughs>